a cabinet shake-up. It's not a shake-up. <laughs> hey, this new cabinet comprises experience and new young office hold who are in government for the first time. But if you look at the makeup of the cabinet, we have the Prime Minister who has been there for 27 years as the MP and the Prime Minister for the last six, but he was a DPM for many years before he became PM. And we also have uh, other ministers who have been uh, serving as ministers since 1988, like Mr. Lim Hang Kiang. And for Mr. Shambugam, he also came in the batch of 1988, although he came into cabinet only in recent years, but they have many years of ground experience. And we have Teo Chi Hien, who is also uh, in cabinet since 1992. And then the others will be from the 97 uh, election and the 2001 election. So you'll find that the team have 10 years or more experience in the cabinet. The new ones, well, they just started just like me when I first started as a Minister of State in 1985. There were many new faces. Over time, we'll learn a job, we'll find out what are the issues confronting the people, we'll find ways of uh, dealing with them, and then we have to find ways of uh, coping and, and uh, refining some of the policies we do. And that has been the way the government operates. But of course, uh, like Prime Minister says, we look at all the policies that we have and see what works and what doesn't work so well. But I think the fundamentals are important. I think we must have a, must have a bearing, you know, keep our bearing in order to be able to change. If we change without any bearing to guide us, without understanding the fundamentals, I think they'll be very disruptive. So I think the changes are not just for the short term, because whatever we change must be for the long term good of Singapore. 这次更换新的内阁政治的时候因为新加坡的社会已经改变很多那么我们的新内阁也要与时并进适应我们人民的需求但是这也不能够忘记了这么多年来为我们国家辛辛苦苦建国的那些前辈们所以在政府这方面的
that I've served 17 years already. It was in 2001, and 17 years at that time was a long time to me, having um, been an MPA and a minister since the age of 38. So anytime uh, he could let me go so that I can go back and do other things. And uh, well, he decided that I should carry on. So I... I uh, served on, and then when Prime Minister Lee became Prime Minister, before that I told him that I can go any time because by which time I've served 22 years, so it's ready, I'm ready, you know. And he said, well, uh, we still need you for a while, and so this time around during election is the same thing, I said, I'm ready <laughs> to go. So I've uh, informed uh, two Prime Ministers that uh, I'm ready to step down from the Cabinet any time, having served so long. So he asked me to contest the election, and I did. And, uh, well, we, we won, and we'll continue to serve the people, and I'll continue to do my job to the best of my ability as a member of parliament. So how, how do you feel at this moment? Is it really relaxed or sad? I feel, I feel, no, I don't feel sad. There's a bit of mixed feeling in the sense that, well, having been involved in government for so long, and uh, not going to be part of it. Of course, I will not be able to see some of the changes personally at close hand. But at the same time, I also feel that we have a good team in place and every team needs to find its own way of doing things. And uh, looking at the team, I think they would have the strength and the ability to carry through what they want to do for the people. So I'm uh, quite glad that uh, I've been given the opportunity I was very privileged, uh, and I, I, I uh, thank the two, uh, in fact, the three prime ministers on Thursday at the cabinet to have given me the opportunity to serve at uh, cabinet as well as uh, Singapore for so long, which is uh, something that not not many people can experience. I think that is a great deal of satisfaction to me. So, is there any unfinished work or anything that you hope will continue? Well, the job is never done. No matter what ministry one is in charge of, there will always be unfinished work. Because by the time if we say that my job is done, I think it means that there will be no progress, no improvement, and then we'll stagnate, and thereafter we'll slide back and we will degenerate. So I don't think that uh, uh, there is any unfinished work at all, because uh, what it means is that we must continue to look at our policies, re-examine them, and uh, change them if necessary. But at the same time, we must also not abandon things that we have done right. And the fundamentals must remain. The fundamentals of Singapore is that firstly, we have constraints. The constraints are our limited size, our geography, our limited manpower. That's a constraint. And uh, also no resources of our own. But the opportunities are there if we're able to make good use of them and know where to look for them. And for that reason, we have extended our international space and we have done quite a lot in building relations with many countries and therefore we were able to grow and prosper. But internally for Singapore, we should also understand another country. That is, because of our limited manpower, we also have a multi-racial population. And for that to remain cohesive, we must understand the needs and different cultural and social and religious requirements uh, of one another. And there needs to be a lot of uh, accommodation, a lot of tolerance, a lot of understanding, and a lot of give and take in order for a uh, multiracial, multi-religious society to coexist and to work for Singapore, be united and face up to the challenges of the world. Singapore is facing tremendous challenges, not internally, but actually externally. Because look at the internal environment, there are constant changes. We cannot be out of it. We cannot opt out. We can't even pull ourselves away from this region. And therefore, in order to face these challenges, the country must be united. And after the election, we should put aside all our political thoughts and uh, uh, differences or even views, but basically to unite and make sure that we have the resilience to pull through whatever challenges that we will face. I can assure you that there will always be unexpected events. 
And to do that, the country and the people must have the resilience to deal with them and be able to recover and move forward again.